So we're back with another analog horror series, and this time is by Anomaly. Okay, we are we already reacted to his the Rio series. This one's called More Ho. No, More Ho. I don't know if the J is silent, but I believe it has to do with something with the moths, moth people, moth men. Maybe I don't know, but the picture it looks like somebody with the moth head. Okay, love you guys. Let's do this. Let's do this. First video. Shababado. Origins. <laughs> okay. The son of God and his glorious arrival shall not up. Hold on. Hold the phone. Shall not appear as a man in this survival. His divine attributes shall remain concealed like a celestial enigma, his essence revealed. Kneel before his shadow before I beseech in the desert agony, his grace you shall reach. Okay. Sounds kind of dark. Thailand. In 2004, the National Police dismantled an unknown sect that had been in existence for three years in the province of Naratiwa, Thailand. The sect carried out its rituals on extensive hectares in the southern part of the country. A series of barns and large houses were found, where it is suspected that around 600 people may have lived. Damn. When the police arrived at the location, they found only three men in very poor hygienic conditions but completely lucid. The men identified themselves as permanent residents of the village, as they referred to it. Okay. Their only brief statements, always in an oddly passive tone, were as follows. We are waiting for our death in the void. We have not been worthy children of the omnipotence and grace of the gobbler of the... The gobbler of the universe! The police decided to arrest these men on charges of suspicion of kidnapping and murder. When the forensic team entered the village, they discovered a large number of corpses in the gardens. Oh, damn. The examinations confirmed that the bodies had been decomposing for at least three weeks. A total of 241 deceased individuals were accounted for, all of whom had apparently taken their own lives by ingesting some form of poison. Whoa, what kind of poison? What is this? In certain gardens of the village, there seemed to be large stretches of rudimentary cemeteries, filled with garbage and strange religious symbolism. Bones and other human remains were found wrapped in bags or hanging from some trees. Some mothmen. The moth people. Inside the barns, the police discovered rooms filled with strange objects on the floor, altars, figurines, aromatic candles, photographs, and books. They all seemed to point to rooms used for bizarre rituals, including human sacrifices. The smell was unbearable, even for the specialized forensic team and their respective safety equipment. Burn the place down! I'll burn the whole place More down! More objects were found scattered in the hallways, but they were not identified as human corpses, so they were not removed from the site until instructions were received from the relevant health agencies. Oh no. Oh no. There were also halls dedicated to peculiar spider-like figures, also adorned with statues and religious symbols. This looks too good. This looks too damn good. May the echo of his words transcend in every soul seeking the righteous trend. He shall return in the shadow and ominous guise. His purity and power shall mesmerize. His blended masses shall fail to recognize. His hidden affinity confused shall arise. Some quick stuff. You gotta be quick with it. Continuing with the exploration of the remaining gardens, the forensic team came across two holes in a secluded area far from the houses and barns. They were incredibly narrow, but they appeared to lead somewhere, possibly a hiding place. Warning, the full images may be shocking. A 
A few bodies were found in a state of transitional metamorphosis. They all appeared to be dead, petrified with a final expression of horror. I think I'm traumatized. That's <laughs> I think I traumatized myself! Followed, researchers began to study the 122 books they extracted from the village for entire Damn. days. Read them shit. Incredibly, bro. these were relics over 9,500 years old. Damn, that exactly? Monks from an extinct religion. Paleographers and cryptographers dedicated themselves to translating the thousands of pages, which were written in a highly ancient variant of modern time. Filled with symbolism that spoke of a figure named Mio Ro Hoi, an insectoid entity that seemed to reveal a profound truth to a group of men who, on the day of the great universe rupture, would be teleported to a dimension where their souls, of immeasurable transcendental value, would become part of the big other. Do you become a part of the insect kingdom? Is that what you're telling me? Now this is this the Mothman prophecies. No, I'm done. I'm done. We turn this off. We're done with this series. Next, my friends, was the last episode of the first episode. Nope, it's cursed. It's, it's cursed. It's cursed. This is from the dark web. That was good. Them images on point. Them images were on point. Look at the detail. Look at that detail. That's crazy. Like this. This is what blew my mind, okay? The detail that they... <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Bro, what's that on your neck? What the heck? So what we know so far is that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a little village, but the thing is that they all worship some moth god of the seven deaths of hell or something, right? And they pretty much sacrifice and maybe they get power because they want to trans transcend into the kingdom of moth so you're telling me that all these like all these people pretty much wrapped themselves up in moth particles and stuff like that pretty much became one with the universe so they could just go to another universe where the moth man exists like i bet you instantly in the, in the, in the millisecond that he got in that situation he regretted it i bet you i don't know what the hell happened with this this guy like this is just some next level detail though it looks like it looks like it's like three people combined into one <laughs> missing Peterson's Thomas Froke Carolyn Porter Iron Carousello Katrine Ziegler Ontario August 2002 in August 2002 the Ontario police reported the disappearance of four high school students oh no The only clues about the possible whereabouts of the young people were some maps drawn and written found in the home of one of the missing students, Katrin Ziegler. The police focused on patrolling the vicinity of the school, as well as less crowded, wooded areas. After five days of searching, four abandoned backpacks were found on the side of an unnamed road. Some identification documents confirmed the identities of the four lost boys. The search team ventured into the dense forest, following any trace that indicated the location of the students. After a few hours, they found nothing but trees, bushes, and endless muddy paths. Oh no. Until they came across a rather peculiar area. Don't tell me the moth coats. Monoliths, with highly Monoliths. oxidized religious symbols, were found scattered for several miles around. In the same area, huge excavated pits were found, but they were completely empty. A possible cemetery was suspected, however, no headstones were found, nor were there any records of a graveyard in the area. In the depths of the forest, the police abruptly came across a large ancient building. Next to it a couple of cabins and sheds. All of them had the inscription of a large insect drawn in vivid colors. Oh no. The surrounding areas were searched, 
and no human or animal activity was reported. When the police entered the mansion, the first thing they found was a rudimentary altar and on it, a moth of enormous proportions, apparently what the hell? In the other rooms, similar crucifixes to those found scattered around the forest were found, as well as huge drawings referring to the large insect. One of the books found on one of the altars was Among titled us. The Resurrection the of Resurrection. M. Ruhoi, the same name found on inscriptions of vessels. Hold on, I'm sorry guys. Let me let's I want to hear him say it again. The resurrection of M. Ruhoi. M. Rohoi. M. Okay, so look, class time. M. Ro Hoi. So it's the, the ending that we get confused. So Hoi. So just pretend that the J is pronounced as an I. Okay? So it's M. Ro Hoi. All right, cool the beans. The same name found on okay. one of the altars was titled The Resurrection of M. Rohoi. The there same name found on inscriptions of vessels and crucifixes. A few small doors and hatches were found inside the mansion, all leading to the basement. Once underground, the police found a large room full of chains with apparently religious symbols. Damn. Crucifixes and figures of strange insects seemed to be the trend. That's creepy as hell. Imagine having dreams about this? Nope, no thank you. One of the two hallways in the basement led to a small room where four statues of men were found in a prayer position around a small hole filled with mud. The other corridor, much longer, seemed to extend several meters beyond the main house. About 20 meters ahead, a door separated the hallway. The police reported a strong smell of ammonia and formic acid. Oh no. Don't open it. Don't go. Don't go. Due to the risk of poisoning, quick photographs were taken and there was no contact with what was found inside the room. Smart thinking. <laughs> don't tell me that the four kids, the four, the four students or whatever are, are in in there during the evening a special team cordoned off the surroundings of the mansion and completely covered it with a hazmat time okay due to the toxicity of the location mm -hmm. it was decided to send in a specialized group for handling highly volatile yep. substances don't the, get video. Okay. Floor, the specialized team went through every room each of which had drawings of giant insects However, the most impactful discovery was made upon entering the attic where they found the same bodies wrapped in plastic, just like in the basement, but these had visibly strange and hardly recognizable heads. The experts determined two possibilities. First, they could possibly be surgically intervened corpses. Second, corpses of hyper-developed larvae in a partial state of dissection. Additionally, a portrait of a man was found who may have been one of the leaders of the cult, or a Who's revered that? figure. Jesus, Jesus, is that Jesus? Finally, Not Jesus, Jesus. the Ontario government decided that the mansion should be burned immediately and yes. covered with a steel dome, with permanent military surveillance until the case was resolved and the place completely secured. Viva la Biodome. 2021. A man whose identity will be wait, 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 hold on. A man whose identity will be well we will protect posted a story on his Instagram wait, you said, bro. showing the following footage from a security camera in the province of Quebec. It's the moth people. That's badass. <laughs> That was badass. These kids, I believe, they're, they they were part of the the corpses that were that were there, and maybe they they the maybe maybe they hatch from those cocoons or whatever, and they turn into the moth that you just saw right now. What if? Or maybe that's the Lord that they they, they worship. Nobody knows. But all we know right now is that it's in Ontario. Okay, if you're in Canada. Be careful. Don't go to any wooded areas. 
telling you. So they found the they found the kids' backpacks and they've been searching and searching until they found these symbols and stuff of of that cult, the Mirahoi. They're pretty much trying to revive him. Maybe they already revived him. Remember, this is the resurrection. They're trying to revive him. Maybe they just needed four more bodies and they found him. Could it be that these four are the four that went missing? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? It could be. Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe in the next video, they'll tell us more about the, the missing four. Maybe they actually found them because these cocoons were found. And you can see that it's kind of like a mix between the whatever is trying to come out and human flesh. Yep. Dry nuts. You're right. This kid caught this on his, on his damn security camera. So what if Mero, Mero Hoy actually did resurrect? What if that's him right there? It's whatever the hell it is. June 29th, 1982. Dear Jeremy, these first few weeks in the Wyoming countryside have been phenomenal. Jeremy. Brother, it's only been a few days, and I already miss you. But I know this is for my own good, and you understand that perfectly. The cabin I bought is quite small, but it's as cozy as my old home in Tampa. The weather is considerably different, the heat here is not as humid, and there are trees that I haven't seen in years. You probably have many more memories of this part of the country. Our father brought you here several times before I was born. I wish you were here, seeing how I have returned to his beloved countryside, far away from hurricanes. I'm sending you some photographs of the place. I brought along a wonderful camera to capture these beautiful landscapes that will surely bring you moments of peace in your busy life. You'll also be able to see my house, which was one of the first things I photographed here. The interior is a bit messy, but it adds a more rustic touch. You know I've never been too fond of tidiness. Nearby, there are other cabins. I still don't know if people live here, or if they only come for vacations. There's also a farm and some animals that, as customary, I've already seen fleeing toward the mountains where a gigantic forest begins. Okay. I'll be sending you letters weekly with some attached photographs. Big hug. I hope to hear news about Sharon and her baby. Be a good father. Gordon. Because this is Gordon that wrote those letters. That's where he's staying at? Oh, this is good. A little creeped out. It's beautiful though. July 9th, 1982. Dear Jeremy, I have never felt so at peace in my life. This place is phenomenal. You should visit me soon. You deserve a good vacation. Just like in my first letter from across the country, mm -hmm. I am attaching some photographs I have taken of the area. The greenery is so intense and dark, even though it's scorching hot, those colors can transport you to what will be a rainy and harsh winter. I have seen many sawmills, it seems that the last few months of the year are terrible. Some of my new neighbors have warned me about it, and suggested that I go and cut down some trees. I prefer to buy wood instead, I really have no idea how to handle an axe. I only know computers and accounting pages. The place still overwhelms me, my walks into the forest are short, and I constantly look back to avoid getting disoriented. This area is wild. Up in the mountains, they say there are wild animals, although they tell me with a certain hint of humor. They probably don't want me to go and get lost just a few weeks after arriving. I saw a couple of fountains made with beautiful stones. I suspect there must be a river nearby, but as I told you, I still don't dare to venture half a mile from my cabin. Besides, I don't hear any flowing water, so it must be quite far away. When you see our mother, please tell her that I have missed her a lot. Show her the photos, perhaps she will be able to remember when she came with our father, although I doubt she can even remember you. Please keep me informed about the state of her dementia. Dang. Take good care of yourself. I hope you use your service weapon much less than I would like. Service Send weapon. my regards to Sharon. Gordon. That's a well. Okay. July 16th. This music's putting Your me journey, at ease. I have seen the photos of the baby. She looks absolutely beautiful. How these children grow in such a short time. Let me tell you, this week has been unusually cloudy. The temperature has dropped a bit despite it being summer, and I still can't fully understand the weather in this place. Yeah, it's weird. But that hasn't been the strangest thing. Sheesh. You might think I'm taking it too seriously. Sheesh. Like that time I called the police station like a madman after the incident with Jasper Brown. But this time I have photographs, as you know. I don't know if it seems odd to you, but I had never seen anything like it. I apologize that this letter revolves only around this anecdote, but it's worth it. 
One morning, I went for a stroll towards the rural area where there are some farms. It's easier to walk around there, where there are hardly any trees, and I'm less likely to get lost easily. I saw some animals and met Tom, an old man who barely knows where he is standing, and he invited me for a welcoming ride in his truck. He drives amazingly, naturally knows the area like the back of his hand, although if you talk to him about something different, it seems like he has advanced dementia. The trip wouldn't have been a big deal if it weren't for what you'll see in the attached photographs. I don't want it to be interpreted as the place getting boring, but I definitely prefer the solitary walks in the woods. Pay attention to the images you are seeing because it's not just a group of uniformed men and women in light grey strolling through the meadows. Oh no, Midsummer. I suspect there's something more. When I saw them from the truck, even before mentioning it to Tom, he started talking about a series of matters that are irrelevant to recount you. Every time I tried to interrupt him, pointing to the people I saw for a couple of miles, he ignored my gesture and continued with his own thoughts. Once we lost sight of him, he didn't speak any more throughout the journey. When the ride was over, I asked him with the utmost care and respect. You won't believe his response. Tourists. Brother, I've seen enough documentaries, and I'm sure there's a damn cult in the area. I will keep you informed. Let me know how you and Sharon are doing with little Heather. Send her hugs and cuddles from afar. Gordon. I leave. I will leave. July 28th. They're outside my house now. Dear Jeremy, I believe I made a grave mistake in my oh. previous letter. I've had the opportunity to get to know the people I saw in uniforms in the meadows. They are genuinely good people. Sometimes I am too gullible. They have brought me some fruits and vegetables from their gardens, and I have been able to share some nutritious lunches with them. Although they don't eat meat or drink alcohol, perhaps that's why some of them remain so healthy at such an old age. They have told me that they are a very large family who have inhabited the county since 1819, and they have chosen to stay in the countryside for generations, away from the city, the noise, and what they call perversions. I suspect they are quite conservative, in case you didn't catch on. They live less than a mile from my cabin, and I have seen them strolling near what I call my garden several days a week. I talk to them about you, Sharon, and little Heather. During the most recent dinner they invited me to, they prayed for the child and the security of the nation. They hold tremendous respect for the armed forces, despite being very peaceful themselves. It gives them a great sense of security, they say. So, I'm absolutely certain that if you come to visit me before winter, they will be delighted to welcome an experienced police officer like you. Sometimes I feel they're too shy. I ask them to pose for a few photographs, but they always covered their faces. Perhaps it's a family rule, or maybe they are afraid of exposure or don't quite understand modernity. But I insist, they are good people, and you will like them. Sending you a big hug. Okay. Gordon. Jeremy, I am thrilled beyond words. I have managed to venture a couple of miles into the interior of the forest that stretches across the mountains. In this month and a half, I have come to know my surroundings better, and certain signs of nature have been tremendously helpful in orienting myself effectively. It's incredible how the shadows cast by the trees can be as useful as a compass or a map. I have even been able to stay out until after sunset and venture into the vast pines, firs, and cedars that abound in the wooded areas. I would love to send you photographs of these landscapes, but I have chosen to show you something that has caught my attention. Perhaps you already knew about it, but for me, it is a novel and fascinating matter. Stones. He's there too. Oh, perfect. It appears that the area still retains remnants of large Indian monoliths. That were He's gonna get sacrificed. Years old. I have found them scattered throughout the forest, and I believe there are at least 30, judging by the distance between them and the miles that the mountain range extends to Utah and Idaho. I am awestruck by the immensity of these structures. The photograph I marked on the back with an X is breathtaking. Look at the size of that rock standing in this beautiful clearing. Hell no, I'll be, I will be concerned by that image. In the rest of the collection I made, you will see other figures. It seems they have worshipped butterflies and birds for centuries. I even found a small wooden moth near one of these monoliths. I loved it. Although, to my surprise, I have hardly seen any butterflies or insects in general. The night is actually too silent, I haven't heard any crickets or cicadas, nor have Hell I seen no. any bees during the day. <laughs> I would lie to you, some of these monoliths have given me chills, especially at dusk. 
Some of them seem to have enormous eyes that pierce your soul to its deepest core. They can be hypnotic at times. I have spent several nights gazing at a couple of them until dawn. Don't worry, I've dressed warmly. Perhaps you shouldn't show these photos to the little one. They might give her nightmares. Oh, Sending no. kisses to her and sharing. Oh no. Dearly, brother, Gordon. Oh no. Kind of cute. August 14, a few days later. Yo, this is getting crazy, hey, Jerry, yeah. This letter will surely surprise you. Don't worry. I'm fine. My health is excellent. Do you remember Tom? Unfortunately, the old man passed away on August 9th. The news saddened me greatly, even though I barely had the chance to get to know him well Damn. or spend enough time with him. Albert, the patriarch of the Witter family, the ones in the photographs with their faces covered, knocked on my cabin door the night Tom died. I heard several police car sirens and others that I'm certain were from fire companies just before he arrived. He was very kind to inform me in time and clarified the loud commotion. He brought me immense peace. I can't quite describe it. That man is wonderful. Oh no, Selena, Yesterday, on August 13th, I went on a hike into the mountains. I felt the need to clear my mind for a while and go even further. Don't worry, the path was really gentle. One would have to be quite clumsy to have an accident on such hiker-friendly terrain. At first, I thought that certain natural trails might have been marked by the locals, and I believe I wasn't mistaken. In the attached photographs, you will see some wonderful shots. But you will also notice some curious things I came across along the way. Okay. That's a nice photo. That's a very nice photo. Very good photo. Very beautiful photo. Very National Geographic-like. Very beautiful. I wouldn't honestly go there, no. It seems that this is an area where ancient beliefs of these American lands and the always dominant Christianity converged many years ago. I found at least four small chapels scattered across the mountain, hidden among the trees. Some peculiar looking chapels. Their architecture is the strangest I have ever seen, although perhaps it's because I only know the Floridian churches and a few from New York. What strikes me is that none of them have any symbols of Christianity, such as crosses, fish, or depictions of Jesus Christ. However, they don't seem to be anything other than temples. You'll tell me I'm reckless, and of course, sometimes I can be. You know me, it wouldn't be the first time I'd get myself into trouble. But curiosity got the better of me. I tried to enter one of these chapels. I tried to be as careful and respectful as possible. I didn't want to force locks or cause any major damage, so I entered through some small windows and took only three photos. It seems they have been abandoned for years. You'll be grateful that the photos don't capture smells. Inside, the stench was horrifying. I bet. There was a repulsive odor that I can't describe. It wasn't the smell of a dead animal or anything of the sort. It's the moss. I still can't get that scent out of my nose, even though I took a couple of hot baths and drank some natural infusions I bought a few weeks ago. I plan to continue exploring this beautiful and sometimes strange place. I'll be the best tour guide for you, the little one, and Sharon. Gordon. August 31st. Okay. Dear Jeremy, autumn is approaching, and my body senses it. I've been bedridden with the flu, or at oh, least that's no. what I believe it is. It's difficult to get used to such a different climate after a lifetime. But don't worry, Gordon is tough as a rock. Since I've been feeling a bit down and dealing that's with a mild crazy. migraine, this time I can only attach a photo of the teacup that has been keeping me company during the nights. That's, that's crazy you won't shot. believe how absent-minded I can be at times. Indeed, there were insects in this place. I found several mosquitoes at the door of my cabin, and maybe it's just me, with the flu and my senses altered, but I can even hear them buzzing at night. Damn creatures. Mosquitoes. I also noticed that some fairly large birds go hunting at night. I've heard them. I hear their wings flapping, and I would swear that a couple of times they perched on the roof. I ain't no bird, they truly bro. seem enormous. I tried to photograph them, but all you'll see is a dark horizon. Oh, I'll no. send you the photos anyway. Oh, Greetings no. to the family. When I recover, I'll write to you a bit more. Gordon. Gordon, please don't send the photos. Gordon, please don't show me the photo! Oh. Okay.
Okay. Dear Jeremy, you won't believe it. I found an extremely strange place, and even that adjective falls short. By the way, I've almost completely recovered from the flu. A week ago, I resumed my walks through the forest and mountains. This time I ventured about six miles away from the cabin. It surprises me Damn. that I haven't gotten lost. Sometimes, no matter which direction I walk in, I always end up back at my little home. Oh, that's Perhaps a good I've thing. I've internalized a survival radar in my head. You get it? Knows. It's like he's the stuck there. He doesn't notice. He doesn't even know. Terrain. My objective was obviously complex and ambitious, so I took risks. I won't bore you with the dilute descriptions of nature anymore. What you'll see in the photos will make it quite clear why I was concerned, so I'll get straight to the point. I found a dome on top of one of the mountains. You might be wondering, what's so strange about that? Well, what I'm about to tell you will make it very clear. What is Vegas? You know I can be reckless. I stumbled upon this enormous structure. That's somewhat the rusted building. From the rain, morning humidity, and the natural That's passage the, of time. The, the, the it building from the second like video. Construction. It had an outdated appearance. I Don't noticed that it there, had bro. no windows or any kind of entrance, except for a small door hidden behind some branches. Don't go in there. I can't even describe what I saw inside. See for yourself. I want to believe that it's just drawings made by some delinquents, kids who spend their vacation in the area, and left their silly marks in this abandoned shed. Unless it's something else, but don't worry, I won't fall for the tale of fanatical religious sects. Besides, it's discussing how they could defile religious iconography in such a way. The moths. Okay, now that's a little bit, that's, I just... I'll be more careful in my explorations. I don't want to come across any criminals along the way. You're far away, and so is the local police, or oh, anything yeah. for that matter. Anybody. Take care, Gordon. Take care forever. The following the following three letters were found detained in the county post offices. The reasons are unknown. September 30th, 1982. Dear Jeremy, I apologize for not writing for almost a month. The flu has Damn. returned, and my health has suddenly deteriorated. Oh, With no. the arrival of autumn. The rains wasted no time in battering the vast fields of Wyoming. The overcast sky has taken away that luminous green from the forest, turning it into a gloomy and dark terrain. It has its charm, I can't deny that. I have definitely confirmed that I am a man of warm and summery lands. These past few weeks have been strange. For the first time, I encountered a dog wandering in the area. It accompanied me for a while during a brief walk through the forest, but the photo I took of it didn't turn out well. That's an awesome shot. I'm not Scary sure, as hell. but I believe that before the dog appeared, I came across one of the members of the Witter family. Oh, you no. know, the ones in the gray uniforms, looking yeah. near my cabin in a somewhat suspicious manner. I asked him what he was doing here, but the man didn't respond. He just turned his back to me and began to walk away. Please don't I shout. shouted at him a couple of times, warning him that I would inform Albert about this, but he didn't seem to care. Nothing seemed to matter to him until I threatened to take his photograph, and that's when he turned around. You'll see in the material I'm sending you what I saw. No. How horrifying. No. Oh my god. <sighs> that guy must have some mental problems. I didn't hear from him again. After the flash, he fled in terror. That same afternoon, I saw something strange in the undergrowth about 10 minutes into the forest. I'm sending you the photograph so you can help me decipher it. It unsettled me quite a bit. I'll keep you updated more frequently. Gordon. Don't show me. Okay. Okay. So the coat, they are, they, they are the moths. They are what yeah, Jeremy, they are. I think my health has worsened. But don't worry, two members of Albert's family came to visit me today. They found out that I was sick and came to see me. Apparently, they knew a lot about medicine, and doctors are scarce here. They said I would get better in a couple of weeks. The change in climate may have weeks. been the cause. My lungs weren't accustomed to such cold air at night. They prescribed me some huge pills. I don't know how I'm going to swallow those things. I suspect they are natural. They remind me a lot of some seeds I saw scattered in the grass in the forest. I'm attaching a photo of the bottle for you. Ah. Ain't no way. Ain't no way some random ass midsummer ass people gonna give me some big old pills from 1823. There's something I want to mention about this visit. Because there was something about them that seemed strange to me. I don't know how they knew about my medical history. Yeah! I don't know if I ever mentioned it to Albert. But it struck me as odd. They stalked them. I talked the least about myself with that family. They got internet. I took a photo of them from the window just because I like taking pictures. 
I will write to you soon. Gordon. They had Wi-Fi the entire time. Underground, they have an entire city of moths. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Jeremy, Te something is going very wrong. I'll let the photos speak for themselves. Okay. That's him. I'm talking about that he's turning. You skipped out on leg day. That is very wrong. Okay, now that is next. No, what happened to his man nips? What the hell's going on I with this? I see something strange. I perceive a huge blotch that clouds my vision. You have no idea how difficult it has been to write this letter. I wish you could visit me as soon as possible. I'm, I'm, nope, sorry, bro. The following material was seized by the federal police. He's dead. November 1st, 1982. Homie is done. It is recorded that Jeremy McDarren, brother of the presumed deceased Gordon McDarren, and the active police officer of Hillborough County was present. The forensic report concludes the following. On the night of November 1st, 1982, inside a cabin in the vicinity of Tilton County, Wyoming, genetic material of middle-aged white man was found. This material was extracted from an organic formation, from an organic formation resembling a giant insectoid cocoon. The whereabouts of Gordon McDarren are unknown, although specialized laboratory reports conclude that the organic formation is entirely composed of human bones, muscle, and caca. Oh, hell no. That's just bad, bros. After the removal of the insectoid mass. The insectoid cocoon on Gordon McDarren's bed. There isn't... What if, what if he's the one on the freaking Instagram story? What we know so far is that the homie went to go visit La Familia, verdad? Ese fue pa' acá, a midsummer village. And he met up with who? He met up with the moth family, okay? The killer moths. But where he messed up at was trying to get too close. I would never be messing. Like, every time he would try to take a picture of them, they would cover their face as if, like, saying photographs is what reveals who they really are or what's inside them. So I believe that these people are not people anymore. I believe they, these people are what hatched from the cocoons. Like, reborn, you can kind of say. Because you remember how in the last video it said that he will be re resurrected? So what if... They all get infected with this, and then they just like get in a cocoon state, and then literally turn into whatever this insect thing is. And it's more than one. I don't think it's just one. I think it's more than one. I think once you once you turn into that cocoon state, you are turning into him, but not literally just one. You're just turning into that that moth being of of hoping dreams. But that's some dark shit. Where's it at? See, look, this is the chapel that he, he went into. But you remember how in the second video, they found that area where they had all the bodies in and they sealed it off, right? They literally built an entire this, this sealing seal of capsule corp, okay, by Boma. It was sealed off. Nobody can go in. And his ass went in and then everything just went left for his ass. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the pills that they gave him, I believe those pills is what infected him. I believe it's what... It's what consumed him. Cause you remember what they said? You'll be good in a few weeks. This is what happens when you take a picture of them. Homer was already turning. Look at him. This is what bedazzled me. Look at his chest. Look at this. Like, look at this. See? What is this? Huh? What is all this? Some dead space type of content right here. Look at his chest. I would be concerned. I'd be leaving. And then the, 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 the letter that said that no matter what, he always finds his way back home. But in reality, it's just that every every turn that he goes, like if he wants to leave, he'll pretty much end up coming back home. So he's stuck there. He just didn't realize that. He was like, you know what? I've uh, I've noticed I don't have GPS, but I always find my way no matter what turn I take. <laughs> I'm a good boy scout. Uh-huh. But he's dead now. And they found his body, well, remains, which was this. All this bulbous ooze of muck and bodily fluids the insectoid cocoon on gordon mcdarren's bed there is an unidentified liquid substance that's him he came out of that mirahoy origins that was a series very interesting but anomaly another banger by the homie we need more so he better he does have a couple more that we gotta check out so we will be dropping into those but this one was interesting i don't like moths i'm not a big fan of moths especially moth men or women or things that just walk around with moth heads I'm not a fan of that but I hope you guys enjoy that. If you did, let me know. Just don't take no 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 sunflower pills. If you if you somebody from the cult comes gives you some pills, please don't take them, okay? Unless you want to be a moth man.